Hi, my name is Felix and I am a research assistant at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. I'm happy to present to you some first results from our study where we try to enhance auditory attention with neurofeedback training. By the way, the study is pre-registered at OSF, so if you are interested in more details, just follow the link. First of all, I would like to give you some context. Imagine yourself at a cocktail party. You know the situation. The more people are talking at the same time, the harder it gets to understand your conversation partner. Now imagine you had a hearing loss. It's even harder. And even if you had a hearing aid, despite of the enormous technical progress, it is not yet possible to control the hearing aid using cognition. But in this case, possibly your brain can help. The brain can selectively focus on the target and inhibit the distractors. This is what we call selective auditory attention. We know from other studies that hearing loss is usually accompanied by weaker neural auditory attention signatures. While spatial attention has been successfully trained in the visual modality, the auditory domain is still underexplored. Now, as we used EEG neurofeedback, we are first interested in the neural markers of selective attention. Here we are looking at alpha brain waves. Alpha is the dominant brain rhythm. In areas with high alpha power, possibly irrelevant or no information is processed, while areas that process information show a reduction in alpha activity. It's therefore assumed that alpha activity is a filter mechanism of the brain. Now to the auditory attention. Basically, when your attention is directed to your left side, alpha power on the left hemisphere increases and on the right hemisphere it decreases. And for the right side, it's the opposite picture. Now, based on this, we can calculate a so-called alpha asymmetry index. This is an important variable for this study, both as dependent variable for some hypotheses and for the neurofeedback training. As you can see in the formula, the difference between the channels on each hemisphere is calculated and then normalized by their sum. This way, we should get, in theory, positive values if the attention is directed to the left side and negative values if people is listening to their right side. The overall goal of this study was to test whether alpha activity functionally contributes to auditory spatial attention. Participants were trained with neurofeedback to increase alpha power in the left relative to the right temporal parietal cortex and vice versa. For this, we applied neurofeedback. Neurofeedback is a type of biofeedback that helps you learn to regulate your brain waves. You can think of it as a way to train your brain similar to how you might train your muscles at the gym. As you watch the display, you get immediate feedback on your brain activity. In our case, if you are directing your attention into the desired direction, a spaceship on the screen will accelerate. If you don't pay attention, it will slow down. This is the basic principle of neurofeedback. And obviously the goal is to get better during the training. We had a sample of 35 participants, normal hearing, right-handed, population aged 18 to 35, and each participant underwent two sessions. In one, they trained their auditory attention to the left, in the other one to the right side. And each session lasted around three hours. And here you can see the study procedure. For this presentation, I will focus only on the resting state measurements and on the neurofeedback part. The objectives of the study were to test if there is an impact of neurofeedback training on alpha power related to auditory attention, something we could call an online effect. Then, if yes, if there is a difference in the auditory response to stimuli depending on where they come from. And finally, to test if there is a persistent bias in alpha lateralization after the training, what we could call an off offline effect. For the online effect, we suppose that neurofeedback modulates the online alpha power lateralization in the train direction in comparison to the alpha lateralization in resting state. That means stronger left hemispheric alpha power lateralization during left neurofeedback training and vice versa. Here we are looking at the interaction term between the factors time, that is pre-training resting state and the neurofeedback training itself, and the factor training, that is left versus right neurofeedback training. 
we observed a significant interaction, so the null hypothesis can be rejected. This means that the lateralization shifted in the direction of the training as expected. To assess the effect of probe direction, the dependent variable was the magnitude of the auditory ventilated potential. This means the difference between P1 and N1. Here we are expecting a significant interaction between training condition and probe direction. And as you can see here, there's a slight trend towards it, but it's not really significant. What we would have expected is something like this, somehow V-shaped. And on the right hand, you can see that stimuli coming from the right side elicits stronger ERPs than those coming from the left. So you see a bit this pattern, but it's not really significant here. Now, for the offline effect, we expected a bias in resting state alpha power lateralization in the train direction after the neurofeedback training. So here we are comparing pre-resting state EEG with the post-resting state EEG data, and we expected sustained neural effects beyond the training. Not forever, but at least for the next few minutes or perhaps hours after the training. Here again, we were looking for the interaction term of time and training. This time, although the means look similar to the online effect, the interaction did not become significant. Conclusions. So far, we can say that neurofeedback training can effectively modulate alpha power lateralization in the targeted parietal regions. But the effects of neurofeedback training on auditory processing were less pronounced than expected. Now, finally, some outlook on further planned analysis. We will have a look at the, the neurofeedback effect on auditory attention in changes in task-based alpha lateralization. For this, we had a task that participants did before and after the training. And we will also have a look at microsaccades. We want to see if this change in lateralization caused by the training is also reflected in a bias in eye movements. Okay, that was all. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Bye.